Over the course of this series of looking at mammalian evolution, I have covered both Cyrenians and Proboscideans in a fair bit of detail. In spite of their appearances, both animals actually have a fair bit more in common than what you might think at first glance. All elephants and Cyrenians form an order known as Tethotheria, a mirror order that dates back to 60 million years ago in the mid-Paleocene epoch. The only order within Tethotheria that is undisputed and that I have not covered previously is going to be covered today. The order Ambrithopoda, meaning heavy beast, is a very poorly understood and poorly studied, completely extinct order of Tethotheres. And yes, you heard me right. This order is closer to elephants, manatees and dugongs than it is to rhinos, horses or tapirs. So in this case, the horns lie. Not a lot can be said about individual members of this order, as the vast majority of them are known from only tooth and jaw fragments. So details about their appearance and behaviour are definitely not understood, even if we can indeed infer a little bit. Stylolophus minor was the first member of Imbrithopoda to appear in the fossil record with just one species in its genus. This animal has very little paleo art online, is known from horribly incomplete remains, and as such it doesn't even have its own Wikipedia page. The first of the two families within Embrithopoda to appear was Paleomazidae, however you pronounce it. Paleomazia Kansui, the family's namesake, appeared in the very early Eocene epoch 55 to 48 million years ago. The unique bolifidon upper molar teeth of this animal distinguish it from other embrithopods, and it even distinguishes its own family. These teeth also indicate a plant-only diet. This particular genus is known from Turkey, along with its descendant, Hypsomasia seni, which is known from the Middle Eocene epoch. Hypsomasia seni was larger than Paleomasia and had highly crowned teeth, which are the best remains we have of the animal. Cravatotherium was the last genus in Paleomasia day, living from the late Eocene to the early Oligocene, in what is today Hatteg, Romania. Cravatotherium went extinct during the Grand Kapoor, or the Great Break, during the early Oligocene epoch roughly 33.9 million years ago. The other family within the order of Brithopoda would be the family Arsinoetheridae, with one very well-known member and one very poorly known member. Namatherium black crowensis is another very poorly known genus and species, known from literal scraps of material. Namatherium black crowensis lived from 47.8 to 41.3 million years ago, living in what is today Namibia. And that's pretty much all we know about Namatherium, so let's move on. For the remainder of this video, I will be talking about the genus Arsinoetherium, which survived the longest and has by far the most published material on it. Arsinoetherium andrusi, Arsinoetherium giganteum, and Arsinoetherium zetelli are all known to be by far the most wide-ranging embrithopods. Arsinoetherium is known from across Afro-Arabia, being found in countries like Amman, Libya, Tunisia, Angola, Ethiopia, Kenya, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt. Arsinoetherium would have stood 175 centimetres tall. For my American viewers, that's about 5 feet 8.5 inches with a maximum weight of up to 2.5 metric tonnes, making about the same size as a modern-day hippopotamus. Arsinoetherium would have also lived like a hippopotamus, with sediments containing their fossils being known from coastal swamplands and heavily and densely vegetated lowland forests, which would have been warm and humid during the Eocene epoch. Similar to modern-day Cyrenians and Proboscideans, these animals were likely not that quick as their robust bodies would have made it pretty hard to run, never mind sprint. Although you should probably take this with a grain of salt. Despite at first glance what paleo art might show to you, the genus actually had four horns, not just two, 
with a tiny second pair resting over the eyes, with some older reconstructions reconstructing them similar to the ossicones of giraffes, although the two structures are not equivalent. The latest species was Arsenoetherium gigantane, which lived in Ethiopia 27 million years ago in the early Oligocene epoch. It is possible that Arsenoetherium had a prehensile upper lip, similar to a proboscis, or maybe more modified structures similar to modern-day dugongs, though either way is more accurate than just not putting them on at all. The Embrithopoda represents a very ancient lineage of animals who survived 29 million years, only to go extinct and never see us humans. The order Embrithopoda is just another corner in the vast network of mammalian lineages to evolve in the Cenozoic. Of course, it is entirely possible that this order was just as rich in evolutionary history as the Proboscideans and Cyrenians, as, after all, the order is criminally understudied. What's also concerning is that all modern tethotheres are endangered or vulnerable, facing human hunting, habitat loss and pollution. If we do not change our ways right now and stop the decline of all modern day tethotheres, then 60 million years of intricate evolutionary history will be lost in just a few decades. At the end of the day, let's hope that we can save these remaining two orders of Tethotheria from going completely extinct, making sure that these animals survive as long as possible.